Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and His Holy Scriptures, the Holy Bible, is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, today is January the 15th in the year of our Lord, 2018, and this is one a day for the soul. Now, after our last video, there was a question that was posed after the, the video that we did on Ephesians. There was a question that was posed or a statement about how this particular viewer might be having difficulty in conquering the things of this world. And so I, I think that it's important just to back up, and if you'll allow me for a few moments to uh, elaborate on a couple of issues. First of all, if we strive to be obedient unto God without the desire coming from the deepest places of our heart and our soul, we're only being religious. We're not born again. We're not children of God, and heaven will never be our home. Now, let me explain that. In Ezekiel chapter 36, the Bible tells us that we will be given a new heart in verse 26, and we will be given a new spirit. God will take away the hard heart, the stony heart from us, and he will give us a new heart of flesh. Now in 1 John chapter 3 verse 9, we are told whosoever is born of God, whosoever has truly been born again, does not commit sin or does not habitually practice sin. For his seed, God's seed remains in him. Now what's being given us here is the idea that God has planted his seed within us and as any seed, that seed should burst open and produce fruit, produce new life. But the seed is there and that's what brings new life. Now, when Nicodemus approached Jesus in John chapter 3 and said, what must I do to enter into the kingdom of heaven? Jesus said, you must be born again. And Nicodemus, not understanding what it was Jesus was saying, Jesus identified it or used an example of the wind. He said, you don't see the wind. You don't know where it starts or where it ends, but you know it's there because you see the effects of the wind upon the things that it's blowing upon. If you see a leaf shaking, you know that the wind is blowing through that tree. The breeze is moving that leaf. And so it is with the people of God. You're going to see the effects of the living God upon them in the way that they conduct themselves in this world. Now, I say all of this because, again, the viewer expressed their difficulty in overcoming the things of this world. And many of you may feel this way. And so what I want you to do is I want you to examine yourself closely and consider whether you are striving first, hoping that the desire will come, because that if that is you, friend, then you need to get serious before God, because that's an indication you have not been born again, truly born again by the Spirit. But if the desire is within you first, and then the practice is difficult to uh, conquer, to obtain well, then that is an indication that the seed of God has been planted within you, that you have been truly born again, and you are simply struggling against the flesh. And the reason you're doing this is because for how many ever years of your life, the flesh has been strengthened and has become a mighty giant in your life. And now as a newborn creation, as a babe in Christ, you have a babe trying to fight against a giant. And of course, that's going to be impossible to win. So what you've got to do is you've got to grow the babe in Christ to where he becomes the giant and the flesh being starved and depraved of the things that it desires begins to weaken. And now it's no match for the new man, the spiritual man. And you do that by the simple disciplines that we stress to you through these videos each and every day. Fellowship with other believers. Place yourself under the teachings of the Word of God, read the Word of God, study the Word of God, and fellowship with your Master. And that brings me to the final point, because a lot of times when people come into the kingdom, they don't have a true vision 
of the relationship that they now are in. That they have signed an agreement, an invisible spiritual agreement, making them a slave of the Lord Jesus and Jesus their new master. And the things we do in our actions reveal that to be true within us, that our perception isn't truly of Jesus as our master. We as a slave with no rights, no reason for argument, and really no possibility to act upon our own will. And that is a life-changing revolution if you can get that in your mind. Let me give you an example. When I was married, I left a life of womanizing. And when I committed myself unto my new bride, I didn't even allow the possibility of crossing the line to cross my mind. Therefore, because that possibility was crucified, it was buried and given no opportunity to rise again, even though the opportunity presented itself in my life to cheat against my wife because I had eliminated the very possibility, I never came close to crossing that line. And let me assure you, there were times where the temptation, the opportunity was presented to me. And even though the opportunity itself was so strong, the temptation never was because there wasn't a possibility as far as I saw things because I honored the commitment I made unto my wife. And so must it be in our relationship with the Lord Jesus. We must extinguish, put to death any possibility of disobedience. And when we see our relationship in that light, it becomes impossible to practice sin. And where the Bible says the flesh is willing, but the spirit is weak, friends, that's not always to be true. There, come, there comes a day when the flesh is willing and the spirit is strong. But the first step in the process must be that we have been truly born again. We must truly bow our knee, confess our sin, and seek Jesus as the only means of any salvation, victory, and freedom that we will ever know. And if we do that, he has promised to cleanse and forgive our sins, to plant his seed or his spirit within us, and now we walk as new creatures with new desires. We desire to read his word. And early on, we may not satisfy that desire as much as we like to because we're babes in Christ. But we push ourselves. We strengthen ourselves daily so that eventually we do become strong enough to follow the desires that he's planted in our hearts. And the things we do for him become greater and greater. The time we give to the things that are important to him becomes more and more. And that's why it's important for you to understand where you are in your relationship, not just of being a slave, but are you a babe in Christ? Are you an adolescent? Are you a teenager? Are you a young man? Or are you an old man? And you have to be honest with yourself, knowing where you are in that relationship and then give yourself to be better. It's just like a marathon runner. He doesn't start out running 10 miles. He starts out running a couple of blocks. Eventually that turns into a quarter of a mile, eventually a half a mile, eventually a mile, then two miles, then five miles, then 10 miles. Then before you know it, he strengthened himself and he's obtained the endurance and how to condition himself so that he can run longer periods. Or a weightlifter, he doesn't start out pressing 400 pounds, he starts out with 25 pounds, 50 pounds, 100 pounds. You get the idea, and so it is with us in the spiritual man, friends. So if you're having a hard time reading four or five chapters of the New Testament or of the Bible every single day, start small, but don't allow yourself to stay there. Increase. Struggle to keep your mind on the things of God all throughout the day. Position yourself in humility and obedience unto the things that he requires of you and of the desires that he places in your heart for you to act upon. Quit spending time with unbelievers and in places that you know you should not be. Find a Christian friend. 
someone you can share with, you can fellowship with, because iron sharpens iron. And you need someone to challenge your beliefs so that you don't simply spout off an answer that you've heard your entire life, but you know why it is what you believe. And you can go to the exact place in the Bible to support your beliefs. And I wanted to say that this morning because my heart goes out to you because I've been there. I'm no spiritual giant, friends. I started out as a babe in Christ. We all do. I'm simply passing on to you what I have learned, maybe in the hopes that you will not fall into the many traps that I fell into. Because these traps bind you and they only waste time where you could be doing something for God, but you're bound, you're not walking in freedom and victory, and you're being held back. But you're only being held back because of your perspective of your relationship with God. He is your master, friend. If you go to the Greek and you look up the word servant that is used hundreds of times throughout the New Testament, it comes from the Greek word doulos, and that word means slave. You are a slave of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have no rights. You live to do what he commands of you. And if you resist and fight against those things, every day will be miserable for you. But if you give yourself unto the service of the Lord and you turn that service into an act of love and joy, then you will begin to walk as the new creation that he has created you, designed you, desired you, and appointed you to be from the very foundations of the world. Well, this has pretty much taken up most of our time, and I wanted to talk to you today about Genesis chapter 35, because this would be the continuation of our, our journey through the story of the Bible. But we'll pick up there next time because I, I really felt like it was important to address this issue because I don't want any of you to ever fall into the trap of religiosity. And religiosity is simply practicing without the desire. It's forcing yourself to do things because you believe this is what is required of you. But the beauty, the simplicity of Jesus Christ of being born again, welcomed into the family of God, not walking by the letter of the law, but by the spirit of liberty, being a new creation where old things are passed away, all things have become new. Understanding that the kingdom of God is not what you do and what you don't do, but it's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Walking in the love and the light and the liberty of Jesus. That's what the relationship is all about, friend. And so if that desire is within you, but you're having a hard time fulfilling the practice of it, take a breath, rest and relax, because that's exactly what's supposed to be happening. All you've got to do is learn what it means to grow in the spirit and to put to death the flesh. The more you cater to the flesh, the more you feed the flesh, the stronger he will become and the weaker the spirit will become. But the more you feed the spirit, the more you give unto the things of the spirit, become obedient to the spirit, the stronger he will become and the weaker the flesh will become. So if you want victory over sin, over disobedience, over the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye and the pride of life, you have to learn to grow the spirit. And you do this by putting yourself under teaching such as the one you're viewing now reading your Bible each and every day, questioning the Bible as you read it, applying the Bible to your life, conforming your life unto the teachings of the Bible, fellowshipping with God, sharpening yourself by fellowshipping with others, and fighting to keep your mind on the things of God as opposed to the things of this world. If you do that, friend, you will be victorious through the Lord Jesus, because he's planted his spirit within you for the very purpose that you would walk in victory, that you would walk in the abundant spiritual life, and that you will be a new creation with new desires, old desires having passed away, new desires now filling you and overflowing from you. Well, I hope this has helped you this morning, friend. I hope it benefits your, your walk with the Lord Jesus and that you'll see the simplicity in it. It's only difficult because we make it difficult. 
And the reason we make it difficult is because we leave the door open for the opportunity to fall back on that old crutch that we're only human, we're going to sin, when the Bible says absolutely not. There comes a point in our spiritual lives where we have victory over sin. But it's not as a babe in Christ, it's not even as an adolescent in Christ. We must begin to mature in Christ to walk in the true victory of Christ. And that's the road you're on. And that's why I so often encourage you not to beat yourself up because you're not all that you want to be. If that's your goal, work hard to achieve it. And then lift your hands in praise and thank God. At least you're not the man. You're not the woman. You're not the boy or the girl that you used to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, friends, I, again, I pray that these words have been an encouragement to you, that they will challenge you, but they will be a blessing to you, that you'll see the potential that lies within yourself to be a faithful soldier in the army of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I pray for you. I care about your journey. And I take spiritual pride in knowing that you love Jesus and you are fighting through all the issues of life to be as faithful as you can in the service of your master and of your king. As he wills, and until next time, I'll see you on the next video.